Hot, 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 hot. Is that what that is? Really? Don't fucking judge me with your <laughs> eyes. <laughs> Go tea now. Ta, 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 ta. Stop, stop. Look at him. He's like, he's stoked. He's like, I'm getting shout out. <laughs> Everyone's getting shouted out. This is episode 96, shout, maybe 97. I didn't check. Doesn't really matter. We're talking about programming, but before all that, we're sipping coffee, Panavore, and we've got the cream with it today, which I think always brings a little bit of extra excitement when we have the cream. Thanks to Dairy Farmers. Thanks, fam. Oh, don't be shouting out though. Oh, oh, yeah, well, they like, I don't know. Sure. Maybe they're listening. Maybe they're going to give us a little something. We'll get our research <laughs> team to do some work on it. How are you guys doing after the internship fucking Metcon session of the century last yesterday? I'm fine. Yeah? I forgot that I did. I hid most of the time. I didn't go Here we hard. go. Old 10 kilogram kettlebell pole. <laughs> yes. Yes. I saw. I noticed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it was good fun. It was good fun, wasn't it? Was it fun, yeah. It was, yeah, it was. We had a- Awesome. For listeners, we had um, the, the internship. It's a, it was the second last- week of the program yesterday so we had our interns coach the coaches which is uh, essentially where they get to showcase all of the things that they've learned over their time in the internship and they get to put on a mini class for the coaching staff here at JB so it's a pretty kind of full-on uh, experience for them they got they had 15 minutes there was four coaches they had 15 minutes each and so we had to do four 15-minute classes which actually ended up being pretty taxing I'm not going to lie I was surprised at how much output like there is. Well, you were hollering the whole time. That's why. I'm trying to bring a bit of energy to you <laughs> fucking geriatrics. Geriatrics. <laughs> the banter. I saw it all and I was like, Joe's going to be sore for days. <laughs> I was kicking back into my CrossFit days. Where yeah, it's just I know. I haven't seen you. Throw the, caution to the wind. I know. The, the quality was back in those CrossFit days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> please, you see my overhead lunges? <laughs> Man, all those babies. Like a steel pole <laughs> emanating from burpees. my shoulder connected to a kettlebell. The, the burpee where they stand up and the feet are like double shoulder width. Why is it movement efficiency, man? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yours were good. Yours were good. Um, we also had yesterday morning, T, you took us through some, uh, some new body weight stuff. You were taking us through some handstand yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's kind of, you know, we'll get into, but that's a bit of a precursor to what we're talking about today. But what were we going through there? Uh, so um, what we like to promote here at Jungle Brothers is um, – we're just a, the, like, like a consistent challenge of the systems that we already have in place because like any science and this is exercise science that we practice in here exercise knowledge as Anand said in the last couple of podcasts ago science uh, just means knowledge and so we accrue a certain amount of knowledge in here we test it on ourselves and then on uh, usually on our uh, one-to-ones or small groups and then if, it's work, if it works and it comes from a reputable source, then um, we apply that to our systems that um, we put into our big classes or our, our, our larger groups. And I guess what, uh, what I was bringing forward yesterday uh, was a bunch of stuff that I've learned from working with a coach uh, whose name is Sasha Batchman. He's a, a Cirque du Soleil performer. It's not Bachman. Bachman. Bachman, I would better. say. Or Batchman. Yeah, but that sounds shit. So we say Batchman. Batchman. <laughs> Batchman. Bacho. Bacho. Coach Bacho. Bacho. Yeah. Uh, really yeah. lovely, lovely guy. Awesome coach. Uh, has, he's like third generation gymnast. Um, sister owns big uh, rhythmic gymnastics. Uh, um, what do you gymnasium. Call it? Yeah, gymnasium in, in the States. And um, anyway, this guy knows his shit, you know. He's, uh, uh, but he's, he's not just a performer because he can get – the high-end performers that are terrible coaches because they've just been doing it forever and they don't really understand regressions and progressions, especially when you're dealing with adults because most of the time the adults that uh, a high-end performer will get will already be at a high-end level of performance and they're just making them even better. But to get someone from, from, a, from a low base such as my own uh, to a proficient space, which is what he's doing, um, and which is what we're doing on a regular basis within the gym, you need some kind of system or structure um, with small progressions and minor cues over longer periods of time to create quality change. Um, so one of – we do a lot of handstands in the gym, always have. Um, we like them. We like them. 
with like all the body weight stuff, done all of that stuff from day dot. Uh, his approach was, how would I say, it contradicted a lot of the stuff that we were, we've done in the gym on a regular basis. Uh, and yesterday I stood in front of all the coaches and told them what those contradictions were, why, and then opened up a space for debate. That was a long-winded answer. Mm. I wouldn't say a necess- Someone would have yawned I would, <laughs> listening to that. I wouldn't necessarily say contradict. I would say um, like some of the stuff is counter, but it's mm. also just alternative. Like it's just a different way yeah. of looking at it. Yep. And I think, um, I think that's important because – well, I see that as important because contradict would indicate that – uh, as I would see it, that one would be wrong. <clears throat> well, that's but, what a lot of the stuff that he was saying to me, and Germans are very black and white. Well, I mean, that's a very broad kind of comment, but this German is like... Apologies uh, this, to our German this approach, this approach is wrong, this approach is right. Yeah. And, but yeah. again, it, I think it's in, the, it's in the details and it's like the... Like, say, using this, like that, like looking at the handstand thing and specifically the concepts and the desired outcomes weren't uh, are not contradictory no but it's just that in reality how a lot of the stuff plays out a thing ends up happening that's not supposed to happen like it's coached in a way that that the that certain shortfalls or or certain um uh, certain aspects of the technique or are not adhered to which means that it then doesn't play out in 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 good quality sustainable progress. Yeah, or or the um the the end result is not as as as, as good as it could be. That's right. Yeah. So you're kind of lowering your potential. Yeah. Yeah. But I think but I do think that's an important distinction because I feel like um on paper you say yeah that works that works but it's really it's and uh, you know part of our process is like once you're in the gym doing it and you're applying this stuff to people and you're applying it to your coaching staff and you're teaching them things and having them pass it on, you start to see little cracks develop and you're like, oh, that's a gap in our process with this particular thing. Yep. <clears throat> so I, I yeah, liked I it. I really liked what you put forward yesterday. That was going to be my next question. Um, how did, did, did you, uh, was there anything in there? That, I mean, did you like it or? I liked it a lot. Yeah, I really did. Um, and yeah, like Joe said, like uh, I don't see it as much as a contradiction as a an evolution or making something that was good better. Mm. So with more information is brought and we put that on top. Um, and yeah, I loved it. I mean, you explained it really well, like starting with the anatomy and, you know, we've already all pretty versed in um, the mechanics of a handstand. It was just supporting a lot of the, uh, the ideas around the shoulder position I think it's amazing and um, uh, I would like to play with those ideas more uh, before we get into our program. Yeah. And just the general approach, I, I, I love. I love that. Like you said, we're always tinkering with the programming and truthfully, I wish it was just like you just set it and it's like, okay. Set and forget. It's, forget it's it. like when you set up a business and you're like, okay, we've got to get gear in there. We've got to get staff and then we get programming. It's all set. Let's open and just deal with sales and bring people in. And But you have to keep changing. We, we keep on going back evolve. in on it and you've got to evolve. And you got to evolve. Yeah. It's, it's, you it's don't like, evolve, you're dead, mate. And it comes you're from a dead. selfish place. Like the money that I invested into Sasha was purely for myself, not cool. for anyone else. I mean, I knew that. If all the is that Jungle Brothers money or your money? Jungle Brothers money. I'll check the. I mean, my money. Oh, no, I'll check. <laughs> the accounts approve this. No, 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 no. I said I'll check. Jungle Brothers <laughs> can't afford my training. <laughs> it's fucking expensive, no way. bro. <laughs> well, that's how it always worked from the start. Like you go, the programming is influenced by the people who are writing the programs. Yeah, and by us. That, yes, that's right. Uh, and the interesting thing on that is that it doesn't end there because now we've got Joe coming in. Uh, rewriting our lift, Dylan and, and I think Lockie might be looking at having more of an influence in our S&M. Um, and again, you'll see these, these changes and these shifts in, in the, the way things work within the space and we analyse and we, we review and if it works, we, we go with it and if it doesn't, it's the self we ex- fuck it off. It's the self-expression Discarded. part of the, um, of yeah. the Jungle Brothers model. Like, you know, 
Yeah. Imagine teaching someone else's program month in, month out versus you teaching someone a program that you, you've written. No works. And you've Actively done the Actively contributed towards. That's right. And, and, you, and you do it. Yours. Train it. I mean, yeah, because that's the thing, like what, what's going to happen with the stuff from yesterday. Mm. Coaches had input yesterday, but then they'll have further input. So even though it's T's program, by the time it comes around to being on the board and being coached to a class, most of the coaches will feel like they've had some hand in it as well, won't they? Mm. Yeah, and I think that is – very important because th- that's the difference between someone coaching you and someone running a group fitness class. You run a group fitness class, you're just going through the motions, you're yelling out a few cues and you're motivating people, but you don't necessarily do that class. It's not your st- It's not what you do for your own training, but if you're practicing- It's a fucking lie. These pos- it is a lie. It's a lie. Because people are looking at you saying, I want to be like that. That guy is, or girl is- leading this this class and and you're giving them something that didn't get what you've got. Dog shit. Didn't get what you've got. It's a lie. Giving them dog shit. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make me name names. Don't make me call out other fitness affiliates. All of them. Every single one. That's, that's not a jungle alliance. I had a piece of feedback for you yesterday, Paulie, on mm. the um the in that in that workshop on the handstand stuff. I was very oh. impressed with uh, a couple of the questions you brought. Oh to what T was presenting and it pointed out to me how far you've come as a coach oh, because I, I thought you wouldn't have been able to ask a question like that, I don't know, 18 months ago. Totally. It, it was just, it wasn't in your realm. You, you probably like didn't feel confident or knowledgeable enough to do so. But yes, I was like, oh, you know, you're on that, pla- you're in that place. Thought it was really cool. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it comes from doing it myself coaching other people like in, in one-on-one and in the group and seeing being there on the floor, seeing the issues and then just kind of bringing it back to how do we, you know, how do we apply these ideas better to our people? And that's, I guess we'll get into that yeah, uh, well, later, which is like how we. It's easy not, yeah. not to do what we do though. It's easy because what we already have works. You know what I mean? Mm, it's pretty works good. time and time again and you can run it like clockwork and you can, apply it to your PT and you can apply it to a group and a small group and a big group and, and it works and so why fix it? You know, if it ain't broke, why fix it? But at the end of the day, if you can get somebody a better quality results in a shorter period of time with less chance of injury, then you have to explore that area, you know? It's, even when it comes to your, to your own practice, I believe. You know? Well, yeah, I think, it's, I think for us it's important from that perspective of being truthful and being confident that we are putting our best foot forward all the time and knowing that what we what we sell here in the gym is of a world-class standard. But it's also keeping us engaged and continuing to have a product that we are energised by and proud of and interested in yeah, rather than right. just slanging the same fucking shit for the last five years, you know. I mean, we talk about, we've, we used to talk about, we don't anymore, but we used to talk about how I think it was maybe in our first few years, we're like, man, we've got like three years of lift programming and three years of S&M programming. We can just run those again. We never have to write another program. And we were always talking about it as if this point would come, this end point. Where, where we just you just start yeah, at the beginning. Fall back on what you've done. And yeah. you know it's going to work. Yeah. Because it worked then. Yeah. But somehow it doesn't work like that, does it? Well, no, we just keep rewriting programs and yeah. they keep evolving. Yeah. And, and I think we've, we've acknowledged that it, in order for all of those things that I just mentioned to, to be the case, we have to keep evolving the program. Yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't be proud of it. You know, then it just becomes some generic shit. And you've got to stay current. Plus, there's so much new info, like, like the pool of, um, pool of, of talent in this space now. It's just that the level is going up, you know, year by year. Uh, the quality of the coaches, the the access to information, the disciplines that we're getting exposed to. Um, you can't just ignore that and, and not th- assimilate mm. it and use it to make our brand stronger. Like, you- And the members too, like, um, like they're evolving as well. Yes. Like we need to stay engaged, but we've got people who have been training for five years and they're just like us in the sense that, they want new information on the same stuff as well, as yep. well as new stuff. Like they need to stay engaged in the same way that we do. So like they want, they want, they, I think that they're going to love, they always love when we bring a new thing, you know, and there's a buzz around, whether it's like a particular movement or some information, yep. you know, 
and, there, and the, you get those little workshops going on in groups of two or three and body weight and stuff like that and people are really trying to break it down and it drives everyone and new challenges new ideas mm-hmm. it made me realize that i think i need to step back into my handstand practice and take back the crown well update yourself you yeah, started just on the rings get like, back to top position you know i, I put i wrote like my goal on the it's on the rings climb bro on, <laughs> not when you're just just underneath the top it's not that far i put my goal down on Summit. the on the board and literally like the next hour everyone was doing what i was doing <laughs> what well, was that wrapped it off again just muscle up shoulder stands and stuff and then i saw joey step back in i was like oh, all right yeah He's taking the crown again yeah Fuck, put you, Mate, you need a point of difference mate well, oh, I got, don't worry, I've got some moves. I got these <laughs> I got these slave. fucking interns talking this <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> Paul's so like, amazing. I put, a, I put a handstand photo of like me from a few years ago, <laughs> like on our ago. Instagram, and Chiron's like, a handstand photo of Joey from the ancient archive. <laughs> 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 oh, shout out. <laughs> what a ripper. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, bro. Uh, but you're great. right. I can't hate you for that. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's actually... That is that, gold. If he was your son, you'd be proud of yeah. that comment. Yeah. My man. <laughs> My man. <laughs> Jim. Okay. No, yeah, it's, it's true. It me. There has been a... Um, uh, from what I've seen, there's been like a rekindling of of the muscle up somewhere. For mm. me, it was it probably... I probably got into it because I saw you doing it more and then you had you and then naturally you got some of your PT clients doing it mm. and then I see T's got some of his PT clients doing it and then you know we got like the all the new interns and they're all working on it and so then somewhere along the way I had my clients doing it and yes. because they're like oh I wouldn't mind working towards a muscle up this year right it's like January Feb what mm. are we looking to achieve this year mm. we're talking strict muscle up by the way yeah the rings listeners. strict on the rings yeah. and um and so I was like and I, I haven't been doing any upper body work for quite a while, really, not in any sort of um, consistent way. So I was like, fuck, man, I'm going to go back to that stuff. It's crazy. You always surprise me because I've seen like, I know there's been periods where you don't work on it, but then say we have a shoot, you'll jump up on the rings and you just bust out shoulder stands like straight up. And yeah. I'm like, fucking hell. That's yeah, just, it's all- like you did a lot of it when yeah. you did do it. Yeah. Like, and the, I, I, I think the beauty of that stuff is, yeah once, um, on it. yeah, once you got the base and once you, like, it, it's at that perimeter of your ability and then once you surpass that perimeter and, and th- like, all that stuff, muscle up, shoulder stand, it's, it's just back in your, like, foundations now. Given that you're still moving. Yeah, same. you're still staying strong and whatever. Mm. So it's funny. I can kind of do everything I could do, but yeah. I can only do it once. Where I used to be able to do it, like, five Multiple. reps, five yes. sets. Yes, yes, yes. You know, and I didn't get sore, whereas now I'm fucking cooked. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. Unreal. I mean, you only need one rep for Instagram anyway, so fuck it. Exactly. Boomerang it. Yeah. You don't it's even like really need a rep. Just need a photo, photo of a finished <laughs> rep. It's a good well, point. Oh, I didn't realize, you know. That's okay. That's what T does. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> With some Photoshop. <laughs> rubbing out the hands holding your legs up. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> So then what's the, um, using the handstand stuff from yesterday, the handstand as a movement is a portion of what we work on in our bodyweight program. And for folks who don't know, we have a simple mastery system that we have, that we follow in the bodyweight program, which is four key movement patterns. And then there's a, a list of progressions within each mastery. And you progress from the beginning to the end of the mastery at whatever rate you're able to. Yeah, and that's called our Roots Roots program. And we've just added, uh, well, we're adding, it's written out, uh, the branches or the limbs, I think we're calling it. So the roots of the tree and then the branches and shit is once you've surpassed <laughs> yeah. the roots area, you can then progress to the limbs, right? That's right. So, yeah, you think about it like we've got, say you've got trunk, for instance, which is one of the four fun, like f- f- foundational growth um, mastery mastery system trunk of the body not trunk of the tree just yes. to be clear trunk of the body as uh, in torso or, uh, when you get to the bottom or like once you get through the fundamentals then you can start picking it moves from like a the, like a fundamental to um, you can start specialising so it's like okay, I'm going to chase down my front lever or my back lever or my dragon flag or side lever or something like that which you know are really I mean? more more higher intensity complex skillful expressions of that same foundation aren't they yeah and it's kind of like the 
the that the fundamental that you need to get one of those you, you got to get through the fundamentals before you start chasing down these more complex patterns because if you don't you break it's called crossfit <laughs> <laughs> or calisthenics take your pick pretty much but really right like yeah if yeah. you rush ahead and try and do the really high strength cool looking yeah. thing without addressing this this trunk or foundation yeah well you, that's you that's the other path end. isn't it you just look at a move and you just keep trying it until you get it yeah um which some humans can do because they picked right mum and dad and they've got a really strong training history and they grew up in a circus uh, but for the rest of us um, that is a path wrought with danger yeah yeah and usually failure and even if you do get the movement, it's at a price, you know? Yeah. And it usually looks like shit. That usually, yes. Usually looks like shit. Can I ask a question for it's your the podcast, listeners? Do whatever you want. For the, for the listeners. Um, why handstands? Uh, so we have in the masteries, we have uh, push, pull, trunk. And the fourth one is, do we call it press or do we call it handstand? Hand, handstand, handstand. It's handstand. And it seems like, oh, these are all... Uh, you know, regular handstand. patterns and that I can understand these parts, but then you got handstand, which seems skill based. Why handstand? I know uh, the it's answer. Just over, just overhead. <laughs> it's overhead, weight load bearing over, so, overhead, you know, and because you can do it upside down, it looks cool. It's great. But I think when you're looking at any of these positions, it's not the position that, I mean, the aesthetics of a good quality position, you look at it and you think, oh, wow, that looks amazing. And it's really nice to be able to accomplish that. But what, we what we're actually trying to achieve is the vessel that can express that particular position and the changes that have taken uh, place in your body to get it is what we're actually after so yes. that's just a it's a it's a it's an outcome you know of neurological tendon ligament muscular you know comp uh, composition um consistency consistency and um skill set and all of that stuff combined equals the freestanding headstand or, you know, a muscle up or beyond, you know, handstand push up, one arm handstand, whatever it is. Yeah, it's not it's not to say that the that the handstand as a movement is the goal as functional or as important as like it's correct pulling pattern. mechanics or you know, yeah, but I think it's I think there's an acknowledgement for us when you're when you're working on body weight strength and you're you're kind of eyeing off these um, really challenging strength movements, there's an acknowledgement that the movements themselves aren't important. Like that you don't have to be able to do a front leave. You don't have to be able to do a muscle up, but you're training for something. So it's fucking cool to work towards something yeah. that is, you know, current, like currently not within your realm, but potentially one day it could be. Yeah, exactly. It's, like it's a milestone of change that's taken place in the body, like positive change. And I think that's really important. And people recognize that. And I don't know if they recognize it like, so it's a subconscious thing when you, you know, Instagram's a really good example when someone does their first chin up or they, um, they do their, they kick up and they catch a first handstand for 10 seconds and everyone's like, awesome, fantastic. Wow, look how far they've come, you know. It's all about that journey in a way. It's like, okay, you've gone from point A to point B and over that time, positive change has taken place enough so for you to reflect that in this position, you know. Yeah, shout out to Coach Nikki who got her first chin up yesterday. First chin up, bang bang. Paul was right there on the Instagram video, ready to embrace. Congratulate, it's nice. She did good. Yeah, she's very proud. She's been working with Az. That's right. Who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> He's in the room. He's in the office with us. <clears throat> no, I thought I'd just ask that question mainly to uh, present that answer to the listeners. Inform. Yeah, and when I do foundations, I, may, I make that a conscious conversation for them to say that, you know, it's not to say that the handstand is something that we see as the goal and a must for a pattern. Like it's not the handstand itself, but it's the expression of uh, strong shoulders yeah. in that in that range. And, and then it's also the journey that goes to them, what yeah. gets Mobile, put into it. strong shoulders, That's right. good body awareness, yep. balance, wrist mobility, hand strength. Consistency. You know, all of that. Mm, mm. All of that. And, and, and that, all, all of that combined is progress when it comes to training. Mm. And it's something, it's a measurable tool. And, you know, we all know if you're not measuring something, it's usually not being tended to, you know. So if you're going in and you're doing exercise day in and day out and there's no form of 
measurement or uh, another way of seeing progress is to um, to judge, you know, like whether we're looking at judge a quality of a movement. So, you know, you got the, the judging gymnastics or judging diving or judging a boxing match or judging some kind of athletic um, event is, is also another way of measuring, if you know what I mean. And you do that with the eyeball, just looking at the aesthetics of a pattern, you know. Is it good quality or is it shit quality, you know? Has it improved? Has it improved? And that's the approach we take here, even with the stuff that is easily measurable with, like, let's say, load. Um, our gym is not necessarily so um, obsessed with the, with the weight that's on a barbell, it's, but it's like how, how well can you squat yeah. over how much weight can you, can you put on the bar, you know? What's yeah. it, how deep are you going? How, how safe does that position look? How much extension have you got for this? All these things that we're looking at are more important to us here than how many more plates can you get on onto the actual bar itself, you know? So all of those things. Quality. That's the fucking takeaway. And, we, and consistency. We've had some development in the lift program as well <clears throat> over recent times. Um, Coach Joe Taylor's just come on board. Shout out to Joe. Um, quite an accomplished amateur weightlifter, but also a really great coach. And she's stepped into the, into the coaching staff and is, she's taking over the lift program. Uh, she's at, kind she's of merging. Yeah. She's having a, she's, this will be a, tr- a trial. Like we trial everything before we, we sign off it in the gym, whether it's coaching or, or programming, whatever it is, there's always a trial phase. Um, it's really important that, um, that we do that because not everything works. Um, so we're trialing Joe's programming and so far, it seems like it's doing well. I'm I'm not up to date with the numbers in lift class, but by eyeball count, the classes are busy, bruh. Yeah, they're very busy. And um, I expressed to the girls when they finished the session the other night to invite a guy friend sometime. There's a <laughs> lot of girls in lift at the moment. <laughs> Dudes are always have always been less uh, enthusiastic about attending our lift class, and I think it's because we don't allow people to just, it's not about how heavy can you go. It's about this enforcement of quality. And I think for a lot of guys with mobility issues, they just can't handle that fucking smack in the face from reality. And a lot of them are aware that it's not what they need these days. Because my uh, client this morning, Jim, sitting there and the the, the lift class was going on um, and he was like, "Uh, is that a stretch class? I said, no, it's a lift class. (laughs) Because they're just warming up. And he said, oh. There's, there's always a lot of girls in that class. So there's no guys. I said, all the girls here lifting weights. So all the guys are stretching. We looked over <laughs> and I said, look, and Kyron was in the corner and he just said like bands and bowls and he was just stretching. And it's, it's the type of thing I think, cause mo- a lot of the guys and, and I guess I'm, I'm speaking to a generalization. Um, they've already ten, done a lot of it. They've already done a lot of it. Like Kyron's done a load of that and he's into his mobility. A lot of the guys are into getting, you know, moving better. And the women here are into getting strong. They want to get jacked. Well, you, yeah, you can't, in a space like this, you, it's um, hard to avoid the areas of weakness, you know, mm. in your own training. <clears throat> and when you see someone else doing something in your area of weakness that's really, like, inspiring, you're like, oh, I need a bit of that, you know? It's the type of training that um, – that uh, those – funny you use those words. I was watching an Edo Portal interview – on the weekend. Never heard of him. I actually never heard of him. Um, I watched last week, I watched like all of Ido's stuff all over again. Oh yeah. Way. Yeah. So I had like a bit of an Ido. Did you watch the Raw Bras interview? The super motivational one? The which one? Raw Bras, where the guy's like interviewing him. It's like a split screen and the guy's asking him questions and Ido's answering oh, no. and it's, they're laying over like, it was okay. like one of the first Oh, Ido a really clips. old one? Yeah. And, and the guy's looks like a bit of a surfy. Yeah. Okay. And Bet- he looks from Northern Beaches again. and Betsy sent it to us. Okay. And was like, have you guys seen this guy? I remember I was like, fuck, who's this guy? Yeah. Like, I don't know, um, years ago. And it's a bit of a side note, but yeah, it, it was great to, to listen because he's, he's, he speaks really well. A lot of his ideas are, are, are great. They're foundational and I align with lo- like a lot of the philosophy and, um, Oh, he was just he was just expressing that, and it made me think uh, uh, about um, your training. And he he was explaining how training he, his movement training should be is and <coughs> people's training should be centered around weakness 
rather than strength. Whereas you have a lot of people who just train around their strengths, mm. if you know what I mean. And it's just a really good way to package that idea for people. Is like, and, and I feel like that's exactly what's going on there. In here, people are aware of what they should be working on. We've, we've, we've come in here and we're trying to promote that high level of awareness mm. and that standard for movement, which is like here. Okay, so what is it that you're missing? And that's what you need to be pouring more time into. But it made me think about myself, oh, am I doing that? But it's just your training really should be primarily focused around where you're weak at. Um, and yeah, that, 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 um, it, yeah, for it me, it might be an it, oversimplification, but it is, um, it is a bit of a, what would you say? Like it's, it's not, uh, I wouldn't say that it, it's, it's very difficult to do mm. for, if it's because exclusively a lot of the time, yeah, yeah, shit, the yeah. stuff that you will, you the, the weaknesses mm. are stuff that you, that don't interest you as well, you know? And if that's what your whole training regime is based around, it can get real dry real real quick, you know? So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think the, you've got to have the stuff in there that makes you tick, you of know course, what I mean? Of course, of course. You've got to get on the mats or you've got to kick and punch someone or you could get out there and hit the fucking trails, whatever it is that you love doing because then you've got context to working on the weaknesses. You yeah, know? I, had, I, I think it's a... Or it's fine a, with the movement culture it's like okay i've got to just delve deep into this one yes, area yes. day in and day out for hours just to accelerate the process in there and you get amazing results but you have to be a certain kind of human to do it that's true i you had know? this conversation with jt yesterday um which is and i'm i'm, I'm not that kind of human. I, i'm not that kind of human either i like, like having fun in my life yeah like i, I gotta address my weaknesses but i also have to stay engaged and meet and celebrate, My, celebrate your strengths, you know? Yeah, yep. Yeah, that's right. I think that, yeah, uh, there has to be an acknowledgement to the weaknesses and work done in that area. Mm. It's a bit idealistic. But it's a good little framework to think for just to like maybe just shift someone's perspective mm. on, on what they're actually doing. Totally. You know? it's, yeah. it's important because if you're just working on your strengths, then you, you're headed to the wrong place. <laughs> like if you, I was, I can't remember why it popped into my head, but this morning as I was like getting out of bed and I was brushing my teeth, I was remembering the guys. There was a couple of guys in particular when I worked at Anytime Fitness as a PT, a couple of guys who just trained the shit out of their upper body and they had really impressive upper bodies and they had these fucking spaghetti legs. And I, and I used to look at them and they were just the most alien looking dudes. If you saw them though in a pair of jeans and I mean, they still had no butt, no, you know, but, but you're like, fuck, look at that guy's pecs and shoulders and all that development. But he sees, you know, he's in training shorts and there's just these little pencils. And I was like, how the fuck does that happen? So for some reason I was remembering that this morning and I'm thinking like, that's what happens when you just train your strengths. That's right. You know, so yeah, there has to be an acknowledgement of the weaknesses in there. A, cult, a cult, Gym culture plays a huge role in that. And yeah, it's very difficult to go in a space that has a really strong culture in, in one particular discipline and then try and try to acknowledge your weaknesses. You know what I mean? Because you get in there and fucking everyone's doing Muay Thai and get good at it and you're like, well, fuck, I need to be doing Muay Thai, you know? Then you go to get the- shit being out Yeah, you go to the lifting gym and you're like, everyone's lifting. It's like, fuck, I've got to lift, you know? Yeah. And I've been sucked into that, that space many times. And Jiu-Jitsu gym is the same. Okay, good roll every day. Everyone, that guy's getting better. These guys are awesome looking up to them. And it's, and it's just about rolling and there's not a lot of emphasis on anything else. So I think to have a, a gym culture where, you know, everybody's acknowledging areas of weakness and they're working on them, whatever they are, it's a hard thing to accomplish and something that I think we do really well, but there's still plenty of, plenty of room for improvement there, you know, because you've got to keep it interesting too. And I get this with... Um, a lot of the newer coaches that come through and they're like, oh, you know, I feel like I'm kind of like growing out of the body weight class and needs to be a bit more of this and that. And I'm like, but you got, you got to understand that you can't just give people what they need because we've done that before and the fucking class empties. No one turns up. You know what I mean? Like we can give people exactly what we know they need for them to get the best results out of their training but there's more to it than that. You know? that yeah, if they're not engaged by the process, they'll, they'll not You're not going to get any results if you're sitting at home. Yeah. You know? So there has to be 
a, a balance of stuff that people need and stuff that people want, you know? And I think a lot of that comes down to acknowledging weaknesses or another way of saying the same thing, acknowledging weaknesses and then celebrating a bit of your strength, you know? So I like that. It's a really good point too. <clears throat> and I, th- I think it's really important for, for PTs just as a side note, to keep that in mind when they're programming for folks, you, you, we've seen it happen many times with PTs who are super fixated on what they want and the client comes in and the client will always tell the PT, like when the PT who's impressive says to the client, what are your goals? Generally, the person's goals will echo that of what the personal trainer is into because the personal trainer is already kind of setting the inspiration or the, the aspiration for this relationship. So it gets raised for the coach to then for the PT to go, okay, cool. I'm going to write you a program that's going to deliver those results and get you to whatever, where I am. But sometimes if they haven't dug deeper to find out actually what that person really wants, the person ends up doing it for a little bit, but they're like, well, fuck this. I, 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 you know, yeah, I want what, you know, I want that thing that's, that they're telling me is good, but I also want to fucking look a bit better naked and I want to fucking put on a bit of muscle or whatever. I look better. I feel a bit of doms in my pegs. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, like that, that shit's important. (laughs) Fucking A. So it's got to be, it's got to be a balance. It can't just be what you know they need. Um, Almost like you can't trust the first, the first response that comes back in that conversation about what someone's goals are. And this, this is the balancing act, you know? So you're, you're focusing on progressing programming into into more efficient, uh, more uh, and, and 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 experimenting with new positions and new coaches' techniques. At the same time, you're trying to keep people engaged, um, and then on top of that, you've got uh, all this new information that's coming in, and you've got to find a way of being able to continue to deliver uh, a consistent product that people know and understand and that when they come into the space uh, you're not going to be changing something completely where they're at the point of like fuck this is not this is not jungle brothers like this is something else what the hell are we doing today you know this is more like crossfit the fuck is this so tell me about the lift program tell me about some of the evolution that's taken place there i mean we've had different phases in it where we've been interested in <clears throat> a lot of Olympic lifting and then a lot of power lifting and then kind of hybrid model, a bit of both. Well, what we had, we, we went into a, a big uh, power lifting phase over COVID and that was partially because of access, uh, access to gear. It just, the programming had to, had to change a bit. Uh, and coming off the back of that, we went into, we, yeah, we had some more power lifting and recently we've come into Olympic lifting basically. And it's been a while maybe a good year since we've had, um, you know, some solid Olympic lifting phases uh, with the entry of Joe Taylor uh, that is here now. Um, and there's been a good response. She's currently got this uh, six-week program and it's building people from uh, the foundations. Uh, a lot of technical work in it, as you'd imagine. Um, and then some strength stuff at the end, which is, has some technique requirement as well. So she's building the lift from the top down type thing. Um, and she's working the, the clean in, in a session and the snatch in another session. And what would you say, you know, like talking in the context of what we're just talking about with what people need and what they want, mm. what are the challenges in a program like that, that you face? Um, yeah, so the, the Olympic lifting in a gym like ours has always been challenging because of the technical hurdles that you got to get through. Um, I think Joe put it really well when she was introducing the program to the coaches that uh, she said, uh, yeah, Olympic lifting is all about something like uh, strength, speed, power, timing, and patience. And, and that's patience in the lift itself, but it's also in the the development the process, process uh, yeah, that journey, yeah. So again, with with that sort of thing, I, I strongly believe building the context around it for people is really important. And you know, we always try to give context to a movement when we're coaching it here, but you don't always. You know, people know that push ups, it's working that kind of area in your body, so you don't you don't always build context every single move that you every exercise in a workout um, when you're delivering it, but. I think for the Olympic lifting, yeah, this phase is all about like letting people know um, that 
you know, we have to go through this phase um, where you're going to definitely suck at it for a while because it's so technical um, and you just have to stick with it and keep turning up and you're going to have little improvements every session um, but by the end of the phase you'll be a lot better at it and, and you know, it's, it's mainly that getting over that technical hurdle and keeping people engaged before they have the breakthroughs. You know, and, and so they, you know, they, they have those breakthroughs. They celebrate little ones because the breakthroughs um, uh, that that motivates people to stick with it. Doesn't yes, it? yes, that's what I mean. Um, so, so yeah, there's a lot of people have uh, busy lives, and they we have to be aware of um, them coming in. You know, some people once a week, twice a week, and maybe uh, that's the only session they get that week. And we need to balance. Um, those technical aspects of, and, and also giving them a workout, um, which is always like the balance when writing a program, isn't it? And it's the balance and that's what we're talking about. It's what they need versus um, what they want and what would be overall better for that person's, say, mental health in that week. So if they've been beaten down all week and then they come in here and they just have to work on a broomstick for 50 yeah, minutes. Can break them. You know, it's going to suck for them, whether they fucking, you know, leave and our gym or one not. Of, one it's just, of three hours of training for the week. That's what I mean. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so those are the challenges with an Olympic lifting program. Um, so we've always had a bit of a hybrid in the past. I, uh, as in, you know, we'll, we'll, when we're talking about allocating time to technique versus some strength at the end. Um, we've always tried to have a nice balance. This one here's probably got a little, little bit more technique in it, but it's holding out really because Joe's. It's just a really good program, and I think everyone's kind of behind making it work. Yeah, and and the numbers are holding, and people are there's definitely improvements. Um, on yeah, at least in the PM classes for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think um, it comes down to well, every time we get a, a new coach that's a specialist in their area, we try to adopt any of the new uh, information that comes with them, you know? Like get, handing over handing over six to eight weeks of programming to Joe, is a, is a, is, there's a lot of trust involved in that. I don't think a lot of people recognise that. Probably, I'm not sure if Joe does or not, but it, this is our, it's our brand. It's, our, it's the product that we deliver as a business. Uh, and we and the people within this space we're moral, morally obliged to to look after and make sure that they get, you know, obviously their money's worth, but they're not getting injured and all that kind of stuff. So to to hand that space over to someone, it's it's a, the you know first you've got to tick a whole bunch of boxes criteria, but um, for for us to do that, uh, what we gain from it is this influx of new knowledge, you know, um, but there's always that risk that the class is going to empty out and people aren't going to like it or someone has a bad experience. Um, yeah, so it's a gamble at the same time. Like the way we evolve uh, our business is is there's a, there's, a, there's a lot more risk involved, but I think the returns and the rewards are so much greater that it's it, it, if as long as we're being smart about the, the investment and the time, uh, the person that we're putting in to the front line, that, that risk is um, it's worthy, you know? Yeah, I'd agree. I think there's times when we've we've taken the chance, not even necessarily with a new coach, but trying something left of field in our program and it didn't come off well. And it, it sometimes something like that could result in you losing a member or two. They're like, oh, you know, had a shit experience, whatever. So you look back and, and you, you, you think, okay, I could have done that better. But I do think that I agree in that like, ultimately that risk is kind of worth taking because it does allow you to keep pushing forward into new ground and coming up with something that is different. Yeah. Whereas if you play it safe all the time, it, it's, it's, it's the same and it's boring and it, it doesn't really get any better. And you need, you need to be challenged. We need to be challenged, you know. Mm -mm. We need this, this new wave of, of, uh, of information that comes through and new coaches to, be, to feel comfortable to turn around and say, hey, what you're doing is out of date. You know what I mean? Or it's kind of, it could be better or it's not quite right or I've learned a different mm. method. Or you're missing something. And, and if we don't have those open, uh, open communication, uh, if, we're, if there's too much hierarchy, 
where a coach on, that that's that's working with us or under or, you know it, under our banner doesn't feel comfortable delivering that kind of uh, feedback, then it, it's the only person that's going to well the only people hurt to that are, are us you know at the end of the day yeah. you start to isolate yourself and then you're stuck in stuck in your own dogma you know and you're just kind of doing things because they've always been done that way and they work and if it's not, not if it ain't broke don't fix it you know yeah and i think we get like you said we have to stay engaged we get really bored if we're doing the same stuff now that we were doing five years ago yeah i would be we, would, we wouldn't we wouldn't be we, we would have stopped yeah doing what we're doing i believe i think we're just not the kind of people to be sitting stationary for long periods of time doing the same thing in and out i mean even if it is working it's all we're always looking for for change i think i remember you saying to me once that your default sp- state is dissatisfied i don't know if that was a word yeah i think we all share a bit of that yeah you know what i mean like as soon as we're sitting stationary we're, it's a bit get a bit irritated yeah <laughs> Should be doing something. Yeah, something, hang, hang something yeah. up over there. Or yeah, fucking. it has its it has its benefits. It has its drawbacks as well. <laughs> Get that light and move it over that side of the room. And T then. often points out that I, I can't really enjoy anything. <laughs> <laughs> but small price to pay for constant growth. Serious. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a similar um, similar evolution that's going on in our jujitsu program. Um, which you guys may be aware of, maybe not as much, um, but the, the, the JITS program kind of operates almost like a little satellite thing at this point because we have the jiu-jitsu coaches and really half of them, which is Nate and Paul, they're not part of the other, uh, the other classes that go on in the gym, um, which then the, the, the goal is to integrate them because we want everything in this space to be integrated in the same way that we don't want people training just jujitsu, we, we make sure they're doing jujitsu and fight lift move stuff downstairs uh, or lift move rather. Um, but there's been a, a cool evolution in the JITS program, which is like this idea that for people that train have trained jujitsu at a standard jujitsu academy, you go in generally and it's a coach and the coach will show you a couple of slick techniques and you'll get a chance to drill them and you'll do that for about 20 minutes and then do some rolling and then, you know, the class is done. And then you might go in the next day and it could be the same coach or it could be a different one and they teach you something completely different. So uh, yesterday we're working on the sweeps from close guard and then today I'm showing you guys um, how to pass the single leg X guard and then you go in on the third day and it's uh, today we're looking at different variations of a straight foot lock. And it's really cool and exciting because you're learning all this new stuff. But the downside is you don't actually get good at any of those things because it's just... It's like coming into the gym and today we're working on muscle ups. Next day we're working on snatch. Mm. Next day we're working on handstand push ups. And like, you can't but, get the consistency. Yeah, but you don't repeat it next week. It just, because the amount of different techniques, it just fucking, it's new shit all the time. How, do you reckon, how many moves do you reckon there are in jiu jitsu? Dude, like, I, th- I know combinations would be endless because, uh, like, infinity probably. Because boxing combinations are, there's an infinite, infinite amount, I suppose, really. uh, but. And and jujitsu is as fucking I don't know how but how many state like single moves do you, th- do you think there are? <laughs> oh, I couldn't even too many for you to couldn't name, even. bro. I, I mean, only if need you need to know one to deal with you, bro. Oh come on, <laughs> <laughs> suplex. <laughs> yeah, I guess if you if you look at like <laughs> if you look at the submissions, that's <laughs> like <laughs> they're kind of finite. You know, you have a few different variations of shoulder locks, a few different arm locks. A um, few different chokes, like, you know, so that's maybe set, say it's 50. But then you look at the different guards, that's almost infinite. Yeah, okay. Close guard, De La Hiva, reverse De La Hiva, X guard, single leg X, K guard, coyote guard, fucking um, half guard, deep half guard. Squirrel guard. Squirrel guard. <laughs> octopus shit. guard. Worm guard. Like it just, <laughs> the guard you know, and, the, and the guards <laughs> just continue to evolve. And then for every guard... There's different variations, but then there's also the defense to the guard. So it's how do you pass this guard? Holy shit. And there might be three different ways to pass a certain guard. So And so then there's the pathway from each guard into each submission. So the <laughs> pathway will be different because the guard position is fundamentally different amongst them all. So how do you get from the K guard to the arm bar? And, you know, like it just, it's a fucking quagmire. Very hard to map. 
Yeah, really. I imagine hard. putting that on a mind map thing. Well, some gyms have done yeah. that, and that, but the ones that do that, like uh, like Tenth Planet Jiu Jitsu and stuff, they they zero in on one or two guards that they specialize in, and that's what they teach. Right, and which just is, get good at it. Yeah, and they just it's like that's that's it. You just stick to that path, and it's re- it's been very effective, you know, for their competitors, and it's kind of a cool way to go about it. Um, it's a bit of an identity as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, they become known for it. That's their thing. They, they, I mean, for you know, using them as an example, they have a couple of guards that they've that Eddie Bravo, who's the, the head coach of Tenth Planet, that he's developed, like he cre- he invented the guards that they use. So it's pretty cool, like because he is constantly evolving these guards like a mad scientist, and then teaching it to his students. Other gyms don't know about it because they're not working on it. So when they go and compete, they're bringing new shit to the game, and people don't have systems to shut it down but that's how the sport works um essentially at the at the top level you have a a top level competitor they are building a game generally speaking around new like new innovations so when they show up to competition they they put on an attack that the person hasn't seen before and that attack wins but there's no answer to it yeah but then everyone sees it in that event and then people start working on the counters and then at the next competition or the next year, it, doesn't work anymore. it gets shut down. So there's this constant process of like reinvention that occurs. So yeah, cool. It's kind of cool. And then you get the old stuff and no one remembered it and you're like, I'm just going to use this. working again. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Well, that's right. It always creates a gap. <laughs> like, then I come I think, back yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Double leg takedown, <laughs> side control. Yeah. Anaconda choke. Yeah. 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 Well, it works beautifully. And that's exactly right. There's I'm always just, a place for that. I'm just going to wait for the next uh, circ- cycle. Full cycle. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing again. But so the... So, you know, the, the downside is if you're constantly trying to address everything and work on all of it and you don't have a structure, then you just end up coaching something new all the time and no one gets better no one at gets, it. No one gets good at anything. Yeah. So we decided that mm. we wanted to focus on one thing. What's our, what's our game? Uh, a lot of what we, what we work on is single leg X guard and X guard. Um, and that's really because um, Paul, who before JT, Paul was the head coach, that's what Paul likes to play and he's very good at teaching it and he has a very, very watertight system from that guard. And so he's like, well, I'm just going to teach this to everyone and I'm just going to keep teaching it until they get so fucking good at it that, they, that people can't shut it down. You don't need anything else. Yeah, and so, and I mean, it's not to say that you wouldn't need anything else, but it's like if you're trying to give a, a new person a home base that they can return to that's safe for them that they feel comfortable with that is it's a good idea yeah Yeah, so so we might we'll work on that for the whole week and if at the end of that week we feel like people still aren't getting it we'll just repeat it the next week yeah and there's an element of okay sometimes the class can feel a bit repetitive um so you know you, you do what you can you add different drills or different intentions to a particular drill or maybe a slight variation but you're keeping it on that same line that same theme so that Everyone ha- everyone's developing a game that's really tight. And then, okay, cool, let's add another layer to that step by step. And so the, the cool thing is, is that you, at the expense of constant innovation and constant excitement, guys, here's a cool new thing I'm going to teach you today. It's like everyone develops something that's really, they're really solid at. It's just like the bodyweight program, really. It is, it? yeah. We had that evolution as well. Oh, that's cool. Mastering the basics. Yeah. The best to master the basics. I actually like training like that, like the, the rep- rep- repetition of the simple, so do I. same stuff. So do I. And just trying to get good at that. Yeah. Like the, if there's too much variety for me, I just get confused. Yeah. I, what do I like? I don't think I like it as much. I, you know, if I think about jujitsu, I've always liked learning new shit all the time. Yeah. But, I, but I'm also like much more advanced. Well, yeah, but I'm also like like super aware that that the end that I, my jujitsu is not that good as a result of having learned in that manner, mm. you know. So it's it's at the expense of my actual development. Mm. But it's just fun to show up and like, oh, here's like three cool footlocks that you've never seen. Oh, mad, teach it to me. Yes, but then yes. I forget it the next day. Yeah. Well, that's yep. uh, like the, there's two different like if your aim is to just enjoy the class and get you know have fun and 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 like uh, enjoy that 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 space and time then that would be optimal you know yeah if you're 
if your goals are okay, I want to compete Win a in the next Abu Dhabis, then it's going to be a bit different, isn't it? I guess. Yeah, you know, and it's and it's kind of that thing too of like in in making people build the foundation and address their weaknesses and do really what you know they need you have to sacrifice a little bit of fun and excitement like a little bit you don't have to sacrifice all of it it's about finding the balance but you make you're acknowledging that all right this is more important for you over a longer time frame rather than looking at what's going to be the most fun to do today yeah and i think uh yeah well you see that through all of our programming then yeah Totally. It's, yep. yeah, it's everything. And, and um, uh, yeah, that's the, I mean, with the, with strength and movement, same thing. It's like, what new shit can we do that's fun and engaging, but also how do we make sure guys are actually getting more mobile and stronger and picking up new skills? Lifting some heavy shit. Yeah. Lifting shit's important, huh? Yep. I've drifted from the, from the weights for, uh, it's probably been about six or seven months. Was it to make you better at handstands? Uh, it was COVID. I just went off. I, even though I had access to all of that kit there, I just went off lifting for some reason. I just thought I just felt better stretching and doing all the body weight stuff. I think I was just tense. You know what I mean? Like because it was a tense period, I felt like my body just needed more <coughs> decompression, like more uh, range expression. And I just thought the last thing I kind of need right now is to be adding load and getting tighter. Yeah, does that make sense? What do you, when Paul, when you give T like a bro hug, you say hi and give him a hug. What does that feel like? I stopped hugging him a long time ago. Mm. It's not what you said last night. <laughs> it's like a sack of concrete. <laughs> it's fucking hard. Like you're a hard dude. I'm, I'm, I'm still pretty supple though. There's a, a Yol Romero quality to your physique. <laughs> Definitely not like your your old woman. Everyone says Mara. when they hit him, it's, it's like, like a, hitting fucking solid steel. Do you follow follow <laughs> that Instagram? Uh, I think it's like MMA Fight Hound or Fight Hound TV or something. No, that guy's like a brick. There was such a funny video of Yoel Romero on it, and he's in like one of these cryo chamber things that goes up to your chest. And um, it's hard to explain. You actually have to go and, and look at it. But it's him talking in Cuban, saying something to someone off camera and then just chuckling. <laughs> but it's just like his, his chuckle is like a full trap body chuckle. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's just such a character. But he's, you can see when like it's just. I reckon he's the scariest guy. In the he's USA. scary. You know, he's, he's fighting. You'd see he's on fight. like a. Like an yeah, he's fighting in Bellator, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, as he moves. Uh, he's fighting fucking. Anthony Rumble Johnson. Oh. Right. I don't know if that's like legit or not. I saw the, the oh, poster. Wow. Yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> Holy shit. That's Sorry, gonna side be, note. That's scary. Yeah, that's too- Rumble's like my favorite. Gorilla's coming you together. Rumble, oh, he's you? the yeah. best. Untapped I think he's talent. Gonna, yeah, I think he's going he's gonna to walk through him. Ooh, I yeah. don't know. He okay. lost those just last two to DC in, in that sort of fashion. He, yeah, he that, just wasn't there. He, he beat just, himself, hey? Yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't there. He just, I think he's finished. It looked like he was just finishing his contract. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't there. Yeah, and coming up against a hyper competitor oh, like DC. Gosh, imagine. It'd just be a mental breakdown. Like, oh, and then he had that. Well, did he fight Jones? Fight Jones. Jones beat him up, I think. Like, he beats everyone up. Yeah. And I then he had DC after that. Yeah, DC yeah. twice. I just know yeah, that. Yeah, was just tough. I think, yeah. Imagine that, having to fight those two guys, like the two best of all time. Awful. They're in between you and being. Otherwise, he would have been champ for sure if those guys didn't exist. Yeah. But I would have been champ if all of those guys didn't that's exist. That's right, bro. And you were in the yeah. UFC. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a really good way to look so at I it. So I can I relate. I can yeah. relate to them. <laughs> um, we're going to wrap it up there. Thanks, gents. Thank you. Thanks for listening, guys. Um, if you want to know more about what we do with our training, get at us, junglebrothers.com. You can connect with us, whether you, you know, if you're looking for your own training or your own guidance, or you want to know more about our coach's internship, just get at us through the website um, or on Instagram at Jungle Brothers Movement. Um, we do have another internship coming up in the next couple of months. Where, look, where are we now right now? We're in mid-Feb. We've got an internship coming up probably early early April. It's not confirmed yet, but we do have quite a bit of interest. So we are booking that presently. People are just bagsing their spots. Um, so yeah, get in touch. And even if you're, uh, here's the thing. We had a gym, a guy, I had a guy get in touch with us through the Instagram the other day who started an Instagram account. Fight, lift, move is the name of his Instagram account. 
And he um, he texted me and was like, Sounds hey, man. familiar. Does sound familiar. And uh, he said, hey, man, I'm, I can't remember what his name is, but I'm so-and-so. I'm from the U.S., and uh, I, I got a gym and I got two buddies of mine and one of them is a professional Muay Thai fighter. One of them like strongman, a couple of them do jujitsu. Like they're really doing all the stuff. And he's like, we've been living this shit for years and um, we just decided we wanted to start a thing. And so we called it Fight, Lift, Move. And then I found you guys on, on Instagram and I just wanted to make it, you know, I just wanted to touch base because I didn't want to tread on anyone's toes because I know you guys have Fight, Lift, Move as your your. With your there three guys on it, one Fiji and one, one white <laughs> yeah, guy. And one, yeah, one caramel one guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just younger and more Yeah, the jacked. white guy looks like Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> Um, a <laughs> <laughs> little outspoken, yeah. yeah. Brash. <laughs> yes. yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I was like, man, that's so cool. And I, I mean, I, I was like, use it. Like, fuck, that's, it's so great to see that someone has evolved really a similar, the same thing to what we're doing in their own interpretation on the other side of the world. And that we're now connected with them. So, yeah, and we've found these people also here in Australia. We've connected with some other gyms who have a similar ethos to ours. And it is our desire to continue connecting with people who have this kind of idea because uh, we're working on something big. Yeah. So if you're out there and you're listening and you're like, yeah, you are my people and this fight, lift, move thing and what Jungle Brothers stands for is um, it, it, it speaks to me. Get in touch because um, we, uh, we'd like to be connected with you. Be cool. Don't be isolated. Connect with us. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thanks. See you guys next week. Oh, yeah. oh outro. Let's go grab some donuts, guys. <laughs> Sandwiches. <laughs>